You know when you meet someone and you walk off, you say, that guy's the real deal? Well, today you're gonna to meet that guy and how he partners with these beautiful animals to provide wishes and hope for people. Come along, you're gonna love the story. Hey, Jimmy, how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Now, this is a world famous cowboy. Yeah, right? this is a world famous little bit of cowboy. I understand cowboys won a few dollars uh, over the career. <laughs> yes, he's won uh, about a hundred thousand last year. He's done really good. Let's talk a little bit about the competition and the camaraderie that goes along with being in these rodeos. The competition is just uh, a lot of, sometimes it's intimidation who you're going to run against in the next drag, you know. Uh, usually you have 10 in a drag, sometimes five, some different places, sometimes seven. But when you're sitting back there waiting, getting ready to run, and Troy Crumline or Chris Coffey or somebody that's really won a lot of money over his life, and you're getting ready, he's getting ready to run, and I got to run after him. It's like, man, your heart gets racing, and there's a little bit of intimidation, but I when I when I get in in the hole, ready to run, I drop everything, and it's just me and him. A lot of you guys actually, you're you're competing on a national stage for national titles, but you still root for each other. I don't oh, get I don't get that. Yeah, it's it ain't. At the end of the day, you, whoever wins, you go up and give them a high five because you know they've earned it. You know, uh, rail racing ain't given to you. It's a timed event, cloverleaf pattern, and the fastest wins. And whoever does that is. Uh, Superstar. So if you're competing against me yep. and my saddle breaks or something, are you going to help me or are you going to say no way? I, oh, I'd help you. I'd run back to the trailer and get a saddle and throw it on your horse and let's go. I I help everybody. Okay. It don't matter if it's a 3D rider, 4D rider, or 1D rider. In the same way with them, they if I need help, they're the first ones there to help me. Let's talk about the partnership with you and the horse. I mean, you guys have to work in tandem. Let's talk about that. Well, I got him a year and a half ago, and it took us probably two months to really get together. And the owner of uh, this horse is uh, Heather Palma, and she won a lot. And she had a baby, so she said, can you take him and run him? I said, yeah. And uh, like I said, 30 days later, me and him just clicked. And, uh, you just knew it. Yeah, yeah, we knew it. And everybody comes up and watches this run, and they actually run up to the fence to watch this run because it's it's a, it's going to be exciting, <laughs> you know. And he can say there's a hundred in a class, and we're the last one to run. I can me and him usually can change it up pretty good if we don't get a barrel. And he's pretty good about not hitting a barrel. So, so who's the star? You're the star? Or he is. Yeah, come away. He is. Come away. I'm just sitting there on him. I'm just having yeah. fun. It, he's, uh, I think you're selling yourself short. Yeah. <laughs> he's fun to ride. Anybody can ride him. He's, uh, he's a great horse. Can you give us a demonstration of what you do with your like, see in action? Yeah. Yeah. I, this is kind of small, but we can uh, saddle him up and Ride him around. I sure like Cowboy. The last horse I was close to attacked me. Cowboy's my buddy, new yeah. buddy. So. Yeah, he's a good guy. All right, let's do it. Now, there's even tougher folks out there, the little folks that you're helping out. Let's talk about those as well. Uh, Brantley Moore is uh, from Bloomington, Indiana. He's, uh, he's uh, got leukemia right now, and uh, 
We just want to do something special for him. And you're doing this hand in hand with Make a Wish, right? Right. Yep. Let's talk about that. Uh, well, how it actually come up is uh, a girl asked me where tie dye, and I said, "Yeah, I'll sure do." And uh, then I got qualified for American, and then uh, one thing led to another, and I said, "Well, what can I do to make the tie dye a good cause?" So, so this is actually the outfit that you wear when you're on the horse, is yes, that right? <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, front, it's got the logo and uh, doing it for the little people in the back. It's a very well organized organization and I wanted to do it for them kids. And to date, I know you've raised thousands of dollars that you donated. Let's talk about the amount. I raised uh, $16,000 in 28 days uh, from September the 1st. And then we was done with the uh, fundraising uh, October 1st. Was this just steamrolled from what you started? Or? I hope it is. I really do. I wanted to kind of step in there and see if anybody else would do it. And, uh, nobody's done it yet, but I hope it goes on. Next year I'm going to do the same thing. If I can get qualified again, I'm going to do it two more kids or maybe three. It kind of depends how much money we can raise. Hey, we want to thank the folks at WM Stables for having us out today, visiting with our buddy here, Cowboy and Jimmy, and uh, throw some coins in to make a wish, go to their website, and partners, we'll be back with more Ag Life right after this. Every time I'm in the area, I have to stop in at Newberg Power Sports to see what's going on. Come along with me. Hey, Scott. How you been, man? Hey, Danny. Good to see you. My pleasure, man. Been probably a year since we've got together. We right. always have a fun time together. Yeah. A lot of changes. Yeah, we've added, we, well, we've added some showroom space and, and uh, everything's looking good in here. And I'd like to show you some of this stuff in here. Let's go take a look. Good. Danny, how much fun is it running this business? You know, that's what we do here is we sell fun. Let's go have some fun. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, Scott, speaking of all new, look at this Sportsman 1000. It's a redesign that, that, that uh, Polaris has come up with, and it's really a sharp bike. Now, you know me, I like to have a lot of fun, man. This looks like fun to me. It does. It, it <laughs> is. Care if I jump on it? No, go right ahead. Now, how fast will this go, Danny? Uh, I'd probably run 80. Okay. One of your bigger sellers, I guess? Yeah, we do sell a lot of XPs. This is the 1000, the top of the line? Yes, okay. that is. This is the top line with all the racking and everything on it. That's okay. it. I see you got some uh, instrument cluster. That gives you miles per hour, RPMs, fuel gauge, all that good stuff. Now, typically, who would this be for? A guy like likes to have fun like me? Or? This is a, this is a trail rider. Well, to go out and have fun. And this your ATV or UTV? I get those confused. It's an ATV. Okay, and look like you got a lot. UTVs are, are the side by side. Looks like you got a lot of those in stock too. We do. I mean, it's it's. We got a lot of sock inventory. Yeah. Yeah. Let's check some other stuff out. Okay, let's do it. Now, Danny, these are the four wheelers that I grew up on. Yeah, these are, they've been building these things for 20 something years like this. They're a straight axle manual shift, um, very dependable machines, and uh, well built. I used to have a ton of fun on these things. Fun, let me show you some fun. Let me get you into the 21st century. Let's do it. All right. Hey, Scott, here's the technology that we were talking about here. On this and here, when you when you put the weight on that, you can see the sag and the suspension on the machine. When you come up to the independent rear suspension, it, which has two shocks and it's got independent rear, it, it, off camber stuff is a lot easier. That, that goes to show you right there what the difference is. Also, you get more ground clearance. This is a 500 Rubicon Foreman, great machine, very dependable, manual transmission. I mean, it, it's just you'll change your own ride 20 years more than likely. You just welcomed me to the 21st century. Yes, sir, we sure did. Well, you not only sell them, you service them too, Danny. Yes, sir, we have certified technicians that work on all our stuff after the sale, and we're glad to do that. Let's us. check that out. Let's do it. Wow, standing short, and standing short. You guys are really growing. Dude. Yeah, we did it all this winter. Um, we actually spent some money and, and, and expanded our shop area for the customer experience as far as in and out goes, and 
for a nicer environment for our employees to work in. Service means a lot to you guys. Absolutely, it does. It's a big part of our Is this business. Is big as it gets? Or no, we got a, we've got a warehouse in here that houses a lot of stuff. Let me show it to you. So Danny, what's back here? Oh, we keep our pg and stuff back here, sold units and the officer road side, and we keep our demo slingshot back here for uh, people to drive. I noticed that slingshot, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, that's our demo, actually, we, we let customers drive that. You, you'd actually let me take that for a ride? Absolutely, that's the way we roll, man. Danny, I always have a great time coming to Newburgh, hanging out with you. I'm always amazed by the selection you guys continue to add here. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I mean, it's all coming from the customer support and them continue to buy from us is the reason we've been able to expand and do what we do. My wish list in this room, man, I, I know what I'd like to go home with today. Well, it ain't over yet. Welcome back to Ag Life. My name is Camille Lambert. Today I'm here with Brad Hagen. He is the new ag agent in Union County. So today we're out in the field, a cornfield actually. We are going to evaluate whether or not this field needs to be replanted. I get a lot of questions this time of year on replant decisions, especially when we've had all this rain. So we're just going to evaluate and see what we think and give our recommendations back to the farmer. So when we're going to evaluate a corn stand, we're kind of going to pick random spots in the field and we measure 17 and a half feet. Now that measurement is off 30 inch rows. So if you have 30 inch rows, that is where you'll do the 17 and a half feet. So I think this is a good spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so in the 17 and a half feet, we counted 25 plants. So you multiply that by 1,000, 25,000 plants per acre in this little strip right here. So we're gonna do it again. One, two, three, four. See that one poking through right there. We got 32,000 plants per acre right here. Big difference. So you want to assess the good and the bad areas of your field, but depending on the size of the field, it kind of dictates how many times you're going to count. And this certain area we're going to do today, we'll do about 10 stand counts. We got 20,000 plants in this go around. That's a lot worse than the 32,000. So we're going to go again and we're going to reevaluate once again. UK also recommends that you wait at least five days from your big rain event before you evaluate your sand counts, just to let it recover a little bit. Five, 10, 11, 15, 16, 17, 17. So that's even worse. UK recommends roughly around 30,000 plants per acre. I've seen recommendations, 33,000 plants per acre. This shows that there's only 17,000 plants per acre. And he planted 33,000, so that's a big drop. We're just trying to determine if it's worth his money to replant or is the stand good enough in this whole field to leave it. So when we get all these numbers, we're gonna average them. Depending on the planting date, what time of year it is, it's gonna change what the university recommends. So once about May 15th, which is today's actual date, May 15th, University of Kentucky's recommendations go down one or two percentage points a day. Right now you're still going to get almost 100% of your yield potential, but say next week, the week after, you're going to be start losing your yield potential, 98, 95%. It's going to just keep going down. So the farmer is going to have to get in here very quickly and replant if he wants to save his yield potential. 16, 17. So we had a 25, a 32, 20, 17, and another 17. Yeah. It's not a very good average so far. Not so far. We'll probably have to replant this area. So after evaluating, what did you say our stand count was overall? Our average stand count for this area was 22,200 plants per acre. So according to UK's recommendation, at this stand count that we have currently right now, you're still going to get 95% of your yield potential. So that's still pretty good. And ultimately, it's always up to the farmer. That decision, it's sometimes a very hard one to make. You know, the weather's going to be nice, but the stand that we currently have isn't that bad. So, you know, you can still get a good yield, but do you gamble and see if you could get a better yield? That's the question. Replant decisions are never fun, but they're necessary. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more Ag Life.
Scott Mason, host of Ag Life. We owe a lot of our inspiration, our show, to Hal Wolford and his back road stories. Right now, we're proud to present one of those back road classics. Welcome to Backroads Classics with Hal Wilford. I guess everybody knows that the Lone Ranger was from Mount Carmel, Illinois. I knew that. I just never knew what Kemosabe meant. If you were a kid or even an adult in the 1930s and 40s, that music and the announcement by Fred Foy was an integral part of every day. The Lone Ranger was a national phenomenon, according to J. Edgar Hoover, a champion of American values. There lives not a kid of that day who was not reprimanded for making the sound of horses' hooves on his school desk. The Lone Ranger was Mount Carmel-born Brace Beamer. And soon the city will celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Lone Ranger's debut on a Detroit radio station. This is the legend of a man who buried his identity to dedicate his life to the service of humanity and country. That was the Lone Ranger's announcer, Fred Foy. Foy is still living, although Brace Beamer died in Michigan in 1965. Foy will come to Mount Carmel's anniversary celebration and is a featured speaker. He'll be here and... Uh... Dick Beals, who played uh, the Lone Ranger's nephew, will be here, and it is my understanding that they haven't seen each other in 40 years, and, and they're both looking forward to this uh, weekend celebration. One of the highlights of the celebration will be a recreation of a Lone Ranger episode, horse hoof beats, William Tell Overture music, and all. Yeah, uh, and people will have a chance to hear the uh, a recreation and, and watch uh, a recreation of a live radio show. Brace Beamer was born in this Mount Carmel home in 1902. He would go on to create what was possibly the most popular radio show ever heard on the American continent. This is Hal Wolford on the Backroads, Mount Carmel, Illinois. You know we brought you some exciting stories here on Ag Life, and we have a lot more stories to tell. Write us at AgLife at TristateHomePage.com. Let us know what you'd like to see in upcoming episodes of the show. Hey, and if you know someone with an interesting skill or hobby, we'd love to feature them on our show, too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.